Are you a bit scared of AI? So artificial intelligence. We've all seen the films, haven't we, about how the world ends. And uh, quite often it seems to be that human beings have decided to create artificial intelligence and that has itself decided to take over. Elon Musk and other key figures in artificial intelligence are urging a halt to AI training due to fears that it could threaten humanity. All of them have signed a letter warning of the potential risks of AI and that the systems are out of control. This is... Does anyone else feel absolutely terrified by this? Joining me now is Dr Henry Shevlin, who's an artificial intelligence expert at the University of Cambridge. OK, so, um, how bad is it? Uh, I think we're at the dawn of a really powerful transformation. I would put AI up there with things like electrification in terms of being significant technological advances. And just as with any powerful technology, there are real risks and harms uh, potentially associated with it. Uh, and so I'm glad this letter was released. Um, I'm actually more optimistic, perhaps. Uh, I did sign the letter, but I, I uh, generally tend to think that AI has the potential to be an incredible benefit to humanity. Um, but it is also important that we get the public aware of some potential risks and harms and we get oversight in place. Right, OK. So let's just have a look at some of those potential risks and harms, shall we? There is the obvious yeah. one that it could take a load of people's jobs. So people who work in accounts, for example, and, well, pretty much any industry. What I am aware of is that people are trying to invest in AI technology that can be newsreaders, which is why I try to inject as much chaotic energy as possible into this show so that you can't replicate this. OK, but uh, how, what, what are some of the pitfalls to AI? So I think you're absolutely right. Automation is uh, potentially one harm that's caused by AI. But I think it's also important in discussions about automation to remember what automation is really doing, which is making goods and services cheaper. In some cases, uh, the public will happily consume more and more of those goods so that we don't actually see total losses in employment. If you look at, for example, the British textile industry in the 19th century, that was an area where we saw massive amounts of automation, increasing technolo technology being used to improve productivity. But people were happy to keep on just buying more and more pairs of clothing as a result. Now, mm. I think that is uh, one possible scenario for a lot of domains where AI is likely to be employed. In other domains, we will see job losses, um, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. There is a future little star of the news behind you as well, I think. Um, there, So I'm it looks like you might, you might have your hands full. Maybe you could generate an AI parenting, uh, a parenting thing, I think. But uh, there we go. But um, yeah, anyway, well, uh, well, look, so do you think that, that them stopping, them signing something to stop um, the, well, I what, Holt AI could actually be, is it, is it good or is it too late? What do you think? Uh, I think a six month moratorium is unlikely perhaps. Uh, but you know, if you don't ask, you don't get, what I do think we should be hoping for is something more like, uh, the kind of regulation we have around nuclear power, things like the international atomic energy agency, which can vet nuclear power in different countries to make sure that it's being rolled out safely, appropriate waste disposal protocols are being used. No one's using it to develop weapons and so on. Mm. And I think actually nuclear power is a good model for thinking about AI. Uh, obviously nuclear power can bring significant benefits. Uh, there are significant risks as well, as we've seen in places like Chernobyl, but it, there's also been quite a lot of fear mongering about nuclear power over the years and perhaps yes. uh, some of that was unrealistic you know if more countries had adopted the french model in the 1970s of replacing uh, coal plants with nuclear plants a lot of us would be in a better place today i think whether it, you're concerned about the environment or just about mm. dependency on foreign energy so yeah. i think if you want a simple model i think that's a useful way to think about it like nuclear power Look, thank you very, very much. I'm sure this won't be the last time that we talk about this. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Dr. Henry Shevlin there, who's an artificial intelligence expert at the University of Cambridge. And a little cameo appearance as well from a little artificial intelligence expert earlier as well. So there we go.